Welcome back to the Gemini channel. My name is Laura. If you're new to the channel, I'm going to do a general message for Gemini. Know that energy is fluid. Rules could be reversed. Interpret the message as it best resonates with you. Also know on this channel and all my channels, I like to dive deep within the reading. So I do look at everything, but we take time to look at the spiritual blocks, the shadow sea, and they play those karmic themes because it's more about why your person's doing what they're doing, why you're attracting this type of person into your life and how you can actually shape shift the energy. A lot of times we already know that the person has feelings for us. We don't know why that person acts the way that they do and why does it trigger us and how can we make those triggers stop? How can we not be triggered by a person that is like a divine counterpart or how can we avoid the negative karmic um, retribution that happens from dealing with the karmic mate. How can we feel strong about ourselves and to be with ourselves? A lot of times our relationships, all our times, our relationships actually are a magnet of traits that we have. Like we, we're pouring, we're drawing to us people that act very much the way that we do. They are wounded the same way that we are. They don't channel their wounds out the same way. So again, the dynamic of the relationship is designed to actually be triggering because the universe grows the soul through our relationships. It creates awareness for us that we wouldn't have. So it's only those real soul relationships that are based on unconditional love that make us change. We don't change because someone tells us to change. Someone comes into our life that makes us change a lot of times. Or a situation that you go through with one of these people can actually also make you change and not change for the better. That's why it's seen as karmic. It can go either way. Did you learn or did you transcend the uh, limitation of your mind? And that limitation was created a lot of times in childhood, but you wouldn't be aware of it. And we don't volunteer to go back to the places that we were wounded. All right, let's see what the word of the video is. Now, again, if you want to enter into a winning free reading with me, like the video, subscribe to the channel, write the word of the video in your comment bar. The word of the video is always on the first card that I pull out. Lately, I've been pulling two from two different decks. Um, because energy tends to stay the same, uh, like for a little while. People don't just evolve all at once, <laughs> you know? We wish that they did. It's actually a slow process a lot of times. So merciless forgiveness is the underlining energy. So, you know, the karmic lesson is forgiveness. And I feel like you're attracted to someone that there is a, like you're connected to someone that you are attracted to, but um, it's a soul relationship and they are to you too. It's just both parties didn't grow up in an environment that was supportive, that made them feel loved. And there was still a little bit of judgment about like why their lives look the way that it does and mainly bl blaming it on the ancestors, blaming it on the parents, feeling like life should have looked a little bit differently. And so is it conscious? No, it's not conscious. A lot of times we don't walk around saying, oh, I'm scorned by what my parents did. No one says that. But it comes out within within the behaviorisms because the belief systems are inherited. So merciless forgiveness is, is that, you know, you were kind of betrayed and so was your person in childhood. It's that, um, so relationships are very hard. They, you always wind up getting, feeling like you get screwing, screwed over. You always feel like you're living the karmic themes of abandonment, betrayal, victimization, all these lower energies um, that make you feel as if there's something wrong with you. And that again, it happens because there's a wound and that wound didn't just come from this person. That's again, that you're connected to, that they're connected to you. It's, they came from your childhood. So this is the underlining energy, but when we have need merciless forgiveness, it's not a common, see, really harsh energy. 
really negative energy that comes from it. So again, we're not seeing that here. The energy is impatient. And I feel like you're in separation right now from a person that does have unconditional love for you. But they got stuck in their ego. And um, they're not as evolved. They don't feel safe in relationships. They don't like to feel vulnerable. They don't like really, it's, again, this person knew what they did was wrong. How they treated you was wrong. They just figured the time separation would blow over and you just get over it. Now it's almost like this person is getting impatient where before you were getting impatient and this person thought for sure you were going to break because they could feel it. There's this ESP connection, but you didn't break. If anything, you got mad. If anything, I feel like you got, you went, this person like played the dice. They rolled the dice, figuring that you would react, that you would get weak. And they play this game with a lot of people. And that's not what you did because you said, no, I have dignity. Again, undervalued. This person made you feel undervalued. Even though that there's a lot of passion in the connection, you know, what this person was trying to do was manipulate you into like being more passionate because again this person knows uh when people get frustrated it's like pent up sexual uh like energy which is passion without this person actually having to be vulnerable without actually having to give and what you felt like that there was still an emotional connection to like an ex because you weren't getting what you need, but I feel like this person didn't really have an, an emotional connection to the ex in a way that was like passionate love. It was more, again, of feeling obligated because this person doesn't isn't really emotionally like capable of giving to anybody. And they're connected to someone that needs it, that wants it, that's angry that they haven't gotten it, that's angry that they tend to look at other people that tend to. So it's more like obligation, especially if there's children involved. And it just made you lonely because you're like, if you're always giving to that person that you claim that you don't have feelings for, well, it's like you're not paying attention to how you're treating me. It's like you're saying that you don't have feelings for, it, but the loyalty is going to that person. And what, regardless of whether you feel emotionally manipulated to do it or whether or not, again, whatever it is, they wouldn't have that emotionally connection to you if you didn't give them the time. And the fact that they keep you on this hook, it's like you're choosing to be there. And so what we see here is somebody that has a very low self-esteem that knows that they should not be connected to this lower energy at this point, but they feel obligated. They feel like they need to do it. There's almost like a moderate energy so that they don't look bad and they don't look bad because they didn't really want to be in this connection. So instead of actually setting the appropriate boundaries, they figured they'd live a double life or have their cake and eat it too, where I feel like they didn't take you seriously. They didn't, um, it didn't mean that they didn't have feelings for you. They just thought that, you know, they weren't coming from, from a really balanced place. They were coming from a very elevated ego, which happens when we need to forgive, we need to let go. It means that we're actually holding on to a core belief that was made by someone that did something to us. And that keeps us bound to keep reliving the experience where this person keeps getting in their own way and they keep betraying the relationship. They keep, you know, so, but meanwhile, to be connected to a karmic that they feel like they have the upper hand because they don't have to really do anything to stay connected to this person. So, like and then understand it makes you feel as if you're making this person that this person is being smothered by your energy this is what 
they make you feel as because they're used to being in a relationship that's they're disconnected from they're emotionally not in, invested in this in the connection with the karmic with you they would have to be emotionally connected so there's a sense of like either you feel that they get very codependent where it's like not letting you breathe or vice versa or sometimes i feel like sometimes it's you and sometimes it's them just depending on the in incident and it's just because um, of betrayal in relationships, getting that close in, into a relationship that you have to be intimate, you have to get deep and intimate on the most basic level is trust. And there hasn't been trust in, in how both parties grew up. So the dynamic of the relationship is that it's, it's like you have an avoidance style you have a person that's living from a lower consciousness because they feel obligated to be bound to somebody else, not because they want to be, but because they've been manipulated and made to feel that way. So they're not coming from their true self. Then there's a lot of passion between you and them, but they're going to undervalue you. That's the way that it feels so that they can stay in this very codependent connection. And then you know, when you call them out on it, instead of them taking responsibility by saying, yeah, I know I need to leave this connection. They don't just stonewall you and gaslight you, but it's again, they, they gaslight you by blaming you, by saying that, like, you shouldn't be saying anything about their situation. Like it's almost very delusional. And it's because they're used to being in connections with people that don't say anything then don't say anything about uh, what they do. And really what you see is that you're like, it's abuse. You're keeping me in a place like of abuse, not giving me anything emotionally, making me feel undervalued, but really no one can make you feel undervalued. We allow people to make us feel undervalued by how much time we're giving them. So when you're dealing with this person, it was more about, um, again, here we say impatient, See, we see it again, and I think I'm pretty sure you got that twice. Yeah, like time is ticking. Like this person realizes finally that you walked away from them. And it's because they haven't given you time. The time went to an X. You felt undervalued. You disconnected. They didn't think that you were going to disconnect from them. And why, I don't know. I guess because the karmic put up with so much. And when you're with somebody that's of, low, of lower hanging fruit for so long, you're always coming from a survival mode. It begins to distort your perceptions of how you think that everyone's going to be. So there was a lot of projection that I feel like this person put onto you that you didn't really know why they were acting the way that they are. And it's because they've been in a toxic connection for a long time, making them conform. But remember, we no one can make us conform we have to become codependent so this person again is codependent and that's why they wanted you to conform to whatever they gave you because they again are conforming to whatever that karmic wants and it's because there's a feeling of lack and so lack is not just showing up as money problems but just lack of who we are it's like that we feel that on the level that we're not enough. We're not good enough. We're not deserving of love. And again, that came from um, childhood. Doesn't we just don't just, we don't just um, feel that way. We're not, we're born into families that teach us lack, that teach us how to think that we're not enough. We're not good enough. And so, this person realizes that they made you feel that way, but they feel that way because of their trust issues, because they never do any healing. So when we never do any healing, we bring that baggage into every single relationship and project it on to the new person that we're with. Hurt people hurt people. 
And so this person actually is making you get more into your body, your physical body, because I feel like you have trauma from childhood and that's that uh, trauma from childhood was all about not feeling valued, not feeling loved, not feeling good enough. And so because of lack, so it caused detachment. So the irony is that this person, there's a lot of passion and there's a lot of makes you think about your body, get better connected to your body. You make this person connect more to their body too, because there's a want and a desire to be better. Right? Like I said, modern. They were moderating themselves out to that karmic. And that's because, listen, it's easier to be in that energy than it is to be in an energy of feeling not good enough. So the psyche tricks itself by saying, well, I'm actually doing a good thing. I'm martyring myself out. I'm doing what I don't want to do because I, I'll see how strong I am. See how self-sacrifice I have meaning where the karmic makes them feel that way too. And of course they look at what they have and that's saying that they don't have enough, which it keeps them stuck in a place of conforming where what they see is all they're conforming brought you and this person further and further and further away from each other because they didn't give you anything. And part of it is because you intimidate them. You intimidate them because they have such strong feelings and you're a true speaker and you say how it is and you stood your ground. This person's getting impatient because there's a sense that you're not coming back. And why would you come back? This person didn't treat you well. They didn't want to ask for forgiveness. But again, so there is a sense that you're like, you never, you never apologize to me. You never ask and you act like I'm, I'm unworthy. You undervalue me. You don't even look at my feelings. So this person is like, you're making them like look at their, their conduct towards you and they're, they're embarrassed and it makes them feel uncomfortable and it makes them have to tap into their feelings and take responsibility. And it's, that's not what they're used to. So it's stressing them out. Because again, I don't know how to deal with this situation. You know, and so it comes out in different ways where I feel like this person does not want to tap in so deep on an emotional level. It doesn't make them feel safe. It doesn't make them feel comfortable. And I feel like you also have that problem. So it comes out within like eating, like when we're trying to suppress our emotions and not look at a situation it's we we're not conscious a lot of the times that we're not looking at it it just makes us feel uncomfortable so we distract ourselves with eating we distract ourselves with other things to actually push down that emotion well that's what this person's doing because they're playing the martyr so they're not being their true self but even though they're getting very impatient, knowing that you're not coming back, they're like, again, so sure that their little game was going to work and where you're like, I'm impatient because it's like now I don't really know what I want. And there's a sense of not wanting to look at it and also being suppressing, so trying to suppress your um, emotions where both parties have that spiritual block of rejection. So which make the the um which make a relationship next impossible because what you see is merciless forgiveness really came from feeling rejected, feeling abandoned in childhood. So this is a very um deep wound that both parties have to go back into. And so this dynamic of the karmic relationship plays out where you know, you were dealing with a person that really thinks who they are, that never really had to be accountable, that never really had to, like, look at their feelings, that never had. To. So making them go deep, it makes them feel uncomfortable. 
And but the whole point is, it's again there without the unconditional love, this person wouldn't be looking at all. So there is very strong feelings. But we have to go deeper because what we see is that they're not really doing anything. Nobody's doing anything. Everyone's afraid of being rejected. And both parties really do need to say, ask for forgiveness, mainly your person first. So the person connected to you first, rather, I should say. I can't fully be there for you as long as this other person is in my life. I know it's hard for you, but I have to go through this experience in order to heal it. They needed to be able to compare you from the karmic. They never had anyone that they were able to. They always had people that went along with everything that they did. But then there's consequences for that when it's a one-sided relationship, you know, where the karmic get, got tired of giving and giving and giving and emotionally not getting back. Well, your person's head got bigger and bigger and bigger. And so... It was a way that they didn't have to ever feel rejected, but they never built that connection with the karmic. And so the karmic has them, yes, by manipulation, by making them feel bad. And, and But it wouldn't work unless they didn't feel good about themselves or if they knew of any other way to be in a relationship they don't know any other way to be in a relationship so they have to go through the entire experience i need you to trust me and believe i am working towards union with you so even though they're with this karmic they're figuring out a way to leave they're 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 actually doing deep processing of why they're even in this type of connection and why it's uncomfortable for them. And they just know that they don't want to be in this connection. They just, again, thought that they were going to kind of like dip out, make you afraid. So you came running back. That's not what happened here. What happened here is that they, you know, got tricked by the karmic or stay with the karmic due to their insecurity. But now they're the ones that are feeling it. They're the ones. They thought that you were the one that was going to feel it. They're the ones that feel it. That's what's making them look at their inner child. Their inner child was wounded when their parents couldn't respond to them in the way that they needed to them. And this is why this person reacted from the place of that wound where they're connected to somebody else that they're not in love with. They have feelings for you. The relationship is deep. It makes them like do a lot of like um, a lot of reflection work, a lot of looking at themselves. It makes them not feel comfortable where at first it was a game. And then it became where they were comparing you to the karmic. And what they're seeing is that they're with the karmic, but they don't really want to be with karmic. And the difference between love and dominance, where this karmic is dominating their, their, um, they're gaslighting, they're, they're, you know, they will per se win, like, because they're with your person, but not by fair gain, by like manipulation, obligation, where your person has to get to a place where they know that they are deserving of a healthy love. I don't think that they knew what that looked like. So it was hard for them to envision with you. They finally see that it's actually real. And if they know because it's bothering them, they actually feel like it's impatient. That came up twice, which means that they're like, I'm, I'm getting really uncomfortable that you're in separation from me. It's like, I'm uncomfortable because I know that I didn't treat you well and that I didn't give you anything. I'm stuck with this karmic. But they had to realize that, you know, they were worth you know, being in a good relationship more than being guilted by some karmic that believes that they should be giving them their time and energy. We don't get into a relationship like that unless we have deep seated inner child wounds where we are, feel like there's something wrong with us and we become codependent and at one time gave too much energy and too much power to a karmic that now is not going to let them release like not release them to have their own life, but it's going to, you know, manipulate and, and, and ground. Well, meanwhile, the whole time your person has feelings for you, but they haven't given you anything. So just the whole dynamic of the connection is like 
talks about needing to forgiveness to learn to let go. I'm feeling controlled by people around me and I don't like it. It's pushing me to find my power again. And this is what I'm saying. That we, the person would not change unless they got really uncomfortable. They don't like their life, but they didn't have anything to compare it to. It's like, and as time goes by, they, they're forced to think about how they treated you. That they're forced to think about all their relationships. And so are you. I'm seeing synchronicities like your name or 111 and working out what they mean. So they feel like it's a spiritual connection. I don't think that this is what they normally would go around talking about. But in their search of trying to figure out who you are, why you came into their life, why, why have you affected them as much, what happens is unconsciously this person sees the synchronicities and it's like, seeing correlations and it's because you're always on their mind so really the universe is saying that this person has to come back and they have to be humble and and and, and apologize but they're afraid that they're not going to be forgiven and so again now i believe that you were brought up in an environment where you weren't treated well where you again didn't get the love and the nurturing so there's a sense of needing to forgive parents for not showing up so we have this same karmic theme where people that are supposed to love and nurture you and be there and show support they don't so needing to be able to forgive we are the illusions of the 3d world don't take everything at face value there's a lot more going on spiritually and energetically than you can see so and that's because there's healing going on like this person needed to have all the realizations of how they were acting and and how like why you were acting the way that you were without the ego, without the filter of the ego. And you also needed to see how you were allowing certain karmic themes to continue to play out. I'm trying to figure out this connection. I've never experienced anything like it before. And that's the fact that there's such deep, unconditional love. See, we don't volunteer to look at these wounds. We don't volunteer to change. We don't, again, this person would stay stuck in their ego, but they don't want to stay stuck in the ego. They don't want to stay stuck to a karmic where they have no freedom. They don't want to live someone else's life. They're actually coming to a place where they're like, I don't want to be controlled by people. At one point, it was safer for your person to stay to play the martyr because that's a false sense of, feeling important, feeling loved, feeling needed, but it's a very one-sided energy that teaches people how to undervalue you, how to disrespect you. So this person actually was getting that from the people that are around them karmically, but with you, there's still unconditional love. And even though they didn't treat you well, which is what's making them feel bad, Again, I wish you could see that we are mirroring each other now, very twin flamey energy, like where you're both working through wounds, which it's very triggering. It's, well, you should do this. Well, no, I, I believe that you should do that. Well, you started, there's a lot of triggers. There's a lot of hurt, but there's a lot of love. And so again, those wounds from the past, I'm trying to leave my comfort zone with this issue. Again, making this person... Uh, Try to like do things differently. Try to understand why they're going through what they're going through. Remember, they haven't done any contemplation work. So, and and looking at themselves and seeing that they're undervaluing themselves. Because of you, I'm starting to see what is really important in my life. And what's important is, again, love. This connection of unconditional love where with the karmic, the karmic doesn't really love them. The karmic wants to own them, wants to wants to manipulate and gaslight because they get something from this person. I'm not saying that they are not passionate, but they're to a point where it's they're where they're it's toxic because they haven't created enough of themselves. It's they're acting like that that the person that's connected to you is their identity where they're not their identity and your person feels smothered because of it. 
So they couldn't give to you because they were controlled and manipulated, but they had to actually be in the state away from you to actually see that they still had feelings for you and then also be able to compare the type of person you are compared to the karmic and see why they feel more connected to you where this whole time the karmic believed had them believing that toxic relationships was all about passion and the twin flame connection and that's not really what it is this person was staying stuck in a place of limitation to you know to please someone else but then being very overly prideful with you so of course there's a lot of doubt that you're gonna like take them back because they have a lot of guilt and they had guilt because they didn't want to hear the cri criticism of the fact that they knew that they betrayed you and it's like now they see because you're intolerant and now they feel even more uncomfortable because they feel powerless. They don't know how to fix this. There's a sense of feeling stuck in fear and bringing them back into that original karmic wound, which is about abandonment, where abandonment is abandonment of self. And that's because they were stubborn and they acted hostile with you. And now they're in a place of grief and hopelessness because they have to figure out how to fix it. And so that doesn't happen without the resentment and actually not disassociating, which is what this person normally did. So that yes, they're feeling a lot of anxiety because they're working towards, you know, why you're holding back. They're getting a bit more and more impatient, like I said, during as time goes by. They're realizing you're not coming back. But there's always a runner and a chaser within the twin flame connection. So it's almost like this person like needed to see. Yeah, like uh, that the connection is sacred. And really is requiring a lot of inner strength. Because again, just to even figure out and organize your thoughts. I mean, I feel like the relationship is so deep and so intense. And then the dynamic of how they have been choosing to live for so long is so out of balance that they really have to organize their own thoughts, figure out what they want. And there's a sense of really starting off from the very beginning but which is like a, an emotional clearing you know because there's a lot of suppressed emotions and there is a time of of again reflection which is kind of like restful for this person and it's because again their mind is always on overdrive they don't trust themselves. They don't get in good relationships. Who's surrounding them they can't trust. So when they think of you, it actually helps them go into like this, this safe space, which makes them feel comfortable. But so what we see here is like some of that was very prideful, but it's coming to the realization that their feelings are still what they are. You've incarnated now to free yourself from suppression. So again, like there's a sense of this person needing to like, like get away from people that suppress them and you as well. See, this person was trying to suppress you in order to like deal with their situation. And when you removed yourself, well, now they're seeing that they're being suppressed and that it was like almost okay if they were able to like have control over somebody else. It didn't matter if they played the martyr because they were going to get their energy met. But, you know, when you walked away, well, now they weren't getting what they needed, but somebody now was suppressing them and controlling them. So again, it put them in a much deeper, uh, it made them look at their life like deeper. It's again to see what was going on where I feel like they overlooked a lot with that karmic. They overlooked a lot about their martyr, martyring behavior, like looking at it more like it was a noble way and then not treating you well at all. But then you have you handled it was um, 
refreshing for this person because the karmic is someone that controls and manipulates you didn't do that you were like yeah you were like no i'm walking away is it like it's almost like a time out and it's like it's a time of rest especially when you're connected to someone that is so emotionally imbalanced that needs you to chase and needs you to become subservient because they're living out of balance because someone's doing it to them If someone doesn't respect you, it's okay to walk away. And that's what this person learned. They said, you walked away because you were not being like respected. And at this point, what they were saying is they weren't be letting, they weren't being respected either. The karmic doesn't respect them. So everyone's staying in this low vibrational energy, mainly because this person doesn't want to let go of the karmic. Finally, they come to a place of being like, why am I letting these people control me? Why am I letting this person control me? It's like, I don't, I don't want that. So what we see is like, even though this person stayed away from you, even though, you know, you're not together, you're teaching this person. You're influencing this person and it's making them change their life, the internal workings of their life. You may not be seeing it right now, but it's like that it's like the falling away um, of this karmic relationship. The karmic relationship is being exposed for what it is, that it's not love, that it's manipulation. So that's something that's like hard for this person because Again, for so long, they believed that it was something that it, that it wasn't. So we have to say, why would you attract a person like this into your life? What are you supposed to learn, right? I mean, because you're not with this person, but they should, they are going to like come back and, you know, ask for forgiveness, merciless forgiveness. Now, whether you want to give this person the forgiveness, you may not want to. And a lot of times we don't want to, especially if we have had gone through experiences in the past where people didn't show up for us. So there's a sense of needing to heal an aspect of, um, of yourself. And also by seeing things, um, from a very similar perception, but seeing the underlying reason why that situation played out the way that it did, it wasn't because there wasn't love, it was because of weakness, of not enough love that the person had for themselves, so they couldn't show up for you. So being able to see the situation in a different uh, contents is very healing. So the first part out is dance, then there's overwhelm. We pull six inner child cards, outdoors and nature. Trauma, one, two, three, four. Unworthy and abuse. Well, obviously like this, you had a lot of dark and heavy childhood wounds of trauma from trauma of being abused of having a parent make you feel unworthy make you feel not good enough this made you not grounded this made you feel like you didn't have any roots made you feel like you weren't secure and safe made you feel very overwhelmed and so you actually had to learn how to go with the flow how to find your own rhythm right when i see dance you can't see this, but she is dancing. It's a hot, like a Hawaiian dancer. Um, but it's to go with the flow. It's to be able to work with energy. So I believe that this person, like, you had to go through a similar experience that would, normally would have tripped you up, would have emotionally tripped you up. Because again, of repeating the karmic lessons of feeling like I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough. You're making me feel like I'm unworthy and it's really abusive. And it's the same trauma that is coming up where spirit says, yes, but it doesn't matter what goes on on the outside. It matters what you allow to affect you on the inside. So having this person do all these things to get you to like, fall for them and uh, chase them didn't work. 
and you continue to stay on your flow and not controlling this person where they're again connected to someone that's controlling them. They, they don't want to be controlled. They don't want this karmic relationship. They're realizing that it's toxic. They never realized it was toxic. This person always went for lower hanging fruit, not really if they, that they're keeping themselves in that space that's a, of a lower energy when you're like, well, it, if I'm going to stay connected to you, it, may, it means that I have to feel staying unworthy and that's abuse and that's the same trauma that I grew up in. And so it's a lack of support. There's a lack of love, a lack of support. So yeah, it gets to be overwhelmed all the time, never knowing what you're going to do, meaning that you're avoided. Like, and when you should show up for me, that you can't show up for me. So again, the, this was a situation that brought up all those wounds, but then brought you back to, well, you always knew how to go with the flow. It didn't mean that you were happy about it, but to find your own rhythm, to find your own dance, to find your own, that we're born into the families that teach us certain karmic lessons. However, it's like we get to choose our family that, and we get to choose our family, our new family from, again, things that are more in alignment with what we want, not our ancestral wounds. So it's almost like this person brought up a lot of wounds that you had of feeling unworthy of abuse of not getting enough love where this person also like is affected by you because like you're making them question that who they are what they want that they can have love that they that they get to either live smothered where someone's controlled controlling them where they could really live real passion that is like we want actually more of. And that's like what this person's able to see. So you both helped each other see things from a different perception. Now, even if you weren't going to act on it, and this person wasn't going to act on it, that the spiritual lesson was still learned. The new per perception was still learned due to the unconditional love. We have free will to say, you know what? I believe that you still would not treat me well, that you would keep me bound to the same feelings that I had in childhood, where you may going to make me feel unworthy that you don't know. Nevertheless, you have free will to walk away, but you still learn the lesson is what spirit is saying. So it's all about finding your own serenity through love, release and inner work. So again, what this connection is, it's like through love, there is unconditional love, but to release, to let go so we can forgive. So by, and that only happens by doing inner work, by doing reflection. And you did that for this person. This person did that for you. You both were looked at each other because of the impact you both had on each other's life. I have a gentle view of life and welcome every step with confidence. I remain brave in the face of fear and have the wisdom to let the universe do its work, to realize that this was a divine connection, but it was a divine connection to help you both create awareness that wouldn't have happened unless there was unconditional love. Does that mean that this person's ready to like be with you? No, because what you know is it's like they don't give enough. They're still manipulated by a, a karmic. They, they're learning to get out of it, but these are the beginning stages and that you have to continue to evolve. You have to keep on uh, putting the energy towards yourself. Put your hand on your heart and ask, what do I know about this situation? You may be surprised. And that is, I know that this person cares about me. I know that they have feelings for me. I know um, that, but it's not what I want. I want to be healed. I want to rejuvenate from that, from being depleted. Um, I want it healed. I want it healed. It's like, and, and in order to um, bring that that lesson into fruition to like really incorporate it, you would have to be able to decide, you know, that 
that's what you want to do, that you want to, to, to look at it from that perception. And it's all about like forgiveness, forgiveness of ancestral karma, forgiveness of parents, merciless forgiveness, where, you know, like we have unconditional love for our parents, but we have discernment of what is right and what's wrong. And that that this rela relationship is really all about learning. It's all about, um, it's all about, about healing and learning, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you get to be with this person. It's like they created awareness where you both impacted each other's lives. Can the person eventually like step into their true nature of who they could be? Yes, but most likely not for a while. And that's because again, there's a lot to work out, but you have a lot to work out too. You're working out trauma and feeling a lack and feeling unworthy and feeling, again, no one should have been able to make you feel this way. So it was bringing up a lot of the inner child wounds and that uh, obviously whenever we, we are, it's bringing up old childhood wounds, we're being asked to learn something or that we're being redirected onto a new path. This is why we're not with that person because once they teach us what we needed to learn, we change our energy vibration. And so our perceptions are different. We don't view them the same way. Uh, that doesn't mean that there's not love. It's just, it's a, it's a very different type of love. So it's about, again, loving yourself. The spirit says, no, this connection was about learning to love yourself. This person brought up a lot of uh, wounds that you had that made you see, see, uh, feel very fragmented and maybe not capable of, again, of being in a relationship because the person was able to make you feel unvalued where it was all about you learning to love yourself because you were giving too much energy to a person that was bound to somebody else and not strong enough to get away from that even though they don't want to live that way it doesn't matter they're if they they're the ones that have to leave you can't make them leave it's abusive that they would expect you to sit there and wait it's again, and it was all about you again, turning the light, the like, um, the light to light the darkness. Again, the, the wounds that we have, the shadows that we have, that the, these parts of fragmentation are hidden in the darkness of who we are. And that you needed to go deep inside of yourself to, to, to see like, how you were stopping yourself and cutting yourself off from love. And that's what spirit was saying. And that it's still just all about you getting back to a place of serenity. And that is really when we're in a place of unconditional love. I'm going to leave that there, Gemini. You let me know how you resonated with this one. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.